This is Pope and uh, this is Jona from Year of the Goat and you're watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy scene. Yeah, um, Year of the Goat, they started out uh, basically as a side project like 10 years ago um, because you all were in other bands at those times. Um, how did this uh, transition happen from a side project to a real band? I, I think I wasn't in the band back then, neither was he. Yeah, but I know. We, know we know the story. <laughs> yeah, you seem to have read up on it. Uh, but I, I think it came as an idea for... Thomas and Frederick and they uh, discussed it and then they started just jamming on some songs and I think they were all pretty busy and when they finally got into recording some stuff uh, I think pretty much the first demo was of darkness I think and then uh, the EP came out and uh, was well received and it uh, well the demand was higher I guess mm. and um, that always makes it more fun to play if uh, people want to hear what you do I yeah of course it's the basic basic thing you do you, you do this for yeah, yeah you want to be loved <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, yeah. it <laughs> look at me <laughs> love him um, but it took uh, like um, till 2011 till the band did the first gig and the first shows and uh, the EP came out. Um, what, what was happening in, in the, the, the years from 2007 to the, uh, 2011? Uh, was it like a, a self-finding process of the band or something? Uh, I wasn't in the band. I know. I've been in the band for a year. <laughs> but, so. but you know the other guys. So. Yeah, I do. Uh, I think just lots of writing music, I think. Just touring. <laughs> That's about <laughs> what I know. <laughs> I what, it, what happened is everything else took so much time for them. So whatever time they could find to work on this project from 2006 and onwards, I think maybe 2009, 2010, it really started to move forward mm -hmm. from just being, a, oh, we can have some time and work on this side idea. So... I think mainly time is the biggest uh, obstacle for m I think for many bands coming up because uh, you have to get your life and your shit together and being in a band takes mm -hmm. up a lot of time for like being out on the road and then being in the studio for weeks and weeks and days and nights and and uh, somehow you have to pay the bills as well so and if you have two or three or four bands then it's Hard to find. Some of them have to be like really on the down low, so to speak. So does it does it pay off if you are in, in like two or three several bands? Can you pay the bills with that? Not really, <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can uh, get as far as like not owe a lot of money to a lot of people. Okay. So maybe you end zero up zero at the end of the month. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, but sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's <laughs> Not so good. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, ev everybody here is doing something else on uh, to pay the bills. So you still got your day jobs, yeah. of course. Oh, yeah, music, okay. uh, uh, the music maybe pays the bills created by the music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like travel expenses and mm -hmm. any stupid idea you have for yeah. expensive strings and stuff, <laughs> I guess. It's a, it's a devil circle, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the devil, um, your last record is called The Unspeakable. Um, what is the thing you aren't supposed to speak of? What is the unspeakable? This is when I'm quiet. <laughs> no. um, we have a little crush on H.P. Lovecraft. And uh, unspeakable is a word that he oftentimes uses uh, or undescribable and he's got a weird way of writing that sometimes 
uh, the endings just come like, and eh, now I don't want to talk about that anymore, and uh, stuff like that. And instead of describing things, he puts um, it's unutterable or unspeakable, like an unspeakable name. Uh, you can write the name Cthulhu, but you can't really pronounce it because human organs cannot make it. You just sounds. did. Yeah, but that's <laughs> the human way of <laughs> pronouncing it. It's actually something completely different that we cannot do. <laughs> okay. So, so, and uh, we kind of like that idea of something that you cannot really speak of, but maybe everybody feels is there or know in some way, mm. but it's hard to put words on. I could sit and not really put words on it for hours. Yeah. Yes. But basically it's the devil, is it? <laughs> no, we can speak, yeah. speak of the yeah, devil. We, don't, we, we aren't <laughs> supposed to speak of it. No problem, <laughs> we can speak of the devil. <laughs> um, your, your music is always, uh, it's not always labeled, but it's often labeled as occult rock. Are you happy with that? Because uh, speaking of the unspeakable and everything like that, uh, yeah, labels are always different, uh, strange. I think, but occult rock. I guess we play some kind of rock, and it's kind of occult. So yeah. why not? But there's a lot of things you could call it. But, but w which part of it is occult, in your in your opinion? Everything but the music. No. <laughs> the candles on stage. Yeah, the yeah. candles yeah. on stage. We don't even have candles. <laughs> we don't even have candles. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, it's. Uh, I think it's a theme that uh, a label that has been put on, and we kind kind of like it because we're into the like uh, Black Widow and Coven and all that old stuff, and what's kind of called a cult and. Uh, somehow a cult can meet the knowledge of the uh, unknowable so it's uh, or the unspeakable for it yeah so it's maybe it's not really possible <laughs> i don't know <laughs> or maybe it is yeah uh, it's another i think we we don't really put labels on it like that we write songs we're suckers for melodies and we have a certain sweet tooth for uh, Lucifer, the bringer of light. Yeah. We kind of kind of dig in on that stuff. Cuz surprises uh, me. It it does. Right now, you know? yeah. Yeah. But n it's not so odd. It's in a time like the Old Testament where it's quite obvious who was the bad guy, killing the Malachites and all of that, ordering Moses to do this and that to all the people there and um, cutting foreskins and crazy ideas about genitals uh, so it's not hard to see who's the real bad guys and then the story is that uh, Lucifer is the angel who has rebelled but who wouldn't rebel against such a monster yeah. you would be crazy not to rebel so it, it can be a symbol I think for some of us it's more like a symbol there is an atheistic way of look, looking at it, like a non-spiritual in any way, and there is also a theistic way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I think all the views are sort of within the band somehow. But if we can join up in the rebellion of against the true darkness, which is, you know who? The unspeakable. Um, <laughs> uh, you said spiritual. Um, it's a good word. Um, are you are you more spiritual people or are you religious people or neither? I wouldn't call myself religious, but I don't know. Spiritual, yes, of course. But it's hard to like describe the <laughs> depth of it. But I don't have a really good answer. Do you do you think it's a it's it's like a search for the meaning of something behind <coughs> everything? Other call it religion, some call it spiritualism. Yeah, maybe everyone is looking for something, right? I guess we're all like searching for the <laughs> meaning of life. I think. Yeah. So. The cool backstage rooms like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is definitely yeah, yeah. on the path. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Many people maybe know this, but many people also wonder about the band name, the Year of the Goat. Um, when 
is the view of the code? Is it already started or just are we just supposed to? Well. Is it just supposed to start in the future or something? We had a year of the goat for the Chinese calendar, but uh, I think it's like a strife towards uh, the year of the goat. And it's for us, I think it's part of the uh, Old Testament again, uh, where, uh, or New Testament as well, where uh, the followers of Jesus Christ are considered uh, the lambs and he is the shepherd. They are the followers, they don't rebel, they do what they do. And the other one, the other side, uh, the opponent, uh, adversary or Satan in some people's mind, uh, is uh, often represented by the goat or the scapegoat or what you have. Uh, so in the same tradition as the rebellion about against the the what we consider the true evil of this world uh, the goat is representative of that so it's uh, more of a we've had so many years of lambs uh, and sheep following so we need uh, well looking forward to the year of the goat but for us every year is a year of goat of course but the chinese years always take longer than a year so yeah. it's, a, it's a long year for you <laughs> for the chinese it's a long year for us it's every year <laughs> so. um your your, <coughs> your latest album the albums before the album before as well came out uh, on vinyl as well um there's a big demand on vinyl those days like it came out on like red and yeah. black and blue and something um is it is it i, I think your, your music is, is is destined to be on vinyl that's my opinion um is, is it better for you to to bring out the vinyl first in special editions and then the cd or what's it about usually they both come out at the same time uh, we kind of like the vinyl i think more um, to different degrees we in the band we got like our first album on vinyl and it's the format it's big and you just love it when there's extra stuff in there and if it's not traditionally black it's uh, a white vi vinyl or a picture vinyl or whatever it can be really interesting I think it has to do a lot with feeling the yeah. music and maybe it's um, in contrast to uh, the di digital revolution and where well, you don't actually hold the packaging or what do you say so maybe that's why vinyls are kind of coming back and it's like a big this big thing you can open up uh, and I also think they're, they're already here they don't they're come back they, when people definitely. buy them in like uh, in yeah, definitely. big supermarkets now so yeah yeah I, I, I saw was it media Markt started yeah, yeah. <laughs> having vinyls that was a good, good and lots sign. of <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good sign um no definitely i'm talking in the perspective of say 10 years or something where mm. we have seen the vinyls coming back more and more so and i think that's part of like the digital revolution and it's account everything every action has a reaction somehow mm. so i mm. think that's part of it and it's it's really nice because it would suck if we were the only ones who wanted vinyl <laughs> and we would have to press six <laughs> vinyls. <laughs> that would be really expensive. So I'm, I'm sorry he doesn't stop talking. I just, no, want, no, I no, just, no. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to show the microphone up your face again. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, how, how old are you, by the way? How old? Yeah. I'm 38. Okay, so uh, you, you experienced the, f the vinyl itself in this in, in the 80s before yeah. the CD came out yeah I had a we had a lot of uh, vinyls at home yeah so that's the way I grew up listening to music so I think it's the perfect yeah. like format for it Are you happy it came it like came be, back be a huge artwork and like you can put it on the wall and, like it's cool so which you can't do with digital stuff so yeah, you can do, but it looks silly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So you're basically you're happy your your records come out in in big vinyl editions as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's cool. 
Uh, your influences range uh, have a really wide range. They 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 come from like bands like Genesis and 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 Blue Oyster Cult, and they range to uh, two bands to uh, like Saturnalia Temple and Alpha Mode and f uh, sinister things like that. Um, do you think uh, you have to go to just uh, the sum of all those influences, which which come from diff very different sides? Hopefully, it's not the sum of them, but uh, I. Uh, I think we we're, we're kind of more like a filter. Uh, we list all of us listen to a lot of different stuff, and we don't have like everything in common. Uh, two of us come from uh, more of a black metal background, and others come from a, maybe a popier background. Where where maybe the Beatles are more of a like. Uh, big thing and uh, some come from other backgrounds like yourself more of a what would, how would you describe like the unspeakable, <laughs> the unspeakable, <laughs> unspeakable background. Well, I come from garage rock uh, I guess and soul and maybe some punk stuff I, I think uh, some people even compare you to muse Did yeah, you read it? I, yeah. Can, um, yeah. I can see that in <laughs> some can. of the songs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, but yeah. <laughs> uh, neither can I. But well, well, on the other hand, I think I've heard news like two times. Uh, they were on TV before I switched the channel. Uh, so I don't really know anything about news. I, so I heard somebody say that Thomas's voice kind of sounds like his voice, and that was one of the reasons. But Maybe it's the melodies or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe we have some... Uh, similar influences yeah. in melody yeah, writing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I find finally, I, I find uh, I find it cool that that the basic songwriting in your music revolves around creating the song and not uh, make a competition in who plays faster and who plays more double bass and something. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's uh, all of the focus is on the song, and it's I'd say it's very well arranged mm -hmm. and thought out during the process of writing so it's it's cool mm -hmm. and that and takes you back uh, to the Beatles yeah which you exactly. mentioned because it was all about the songs yeah, you know? yeah and Jonah was involved in the unspeakable as well because we recorded uh, the drums uh, in his studio and so he was he was in sort of uh. in the process there as well already but um, I think we're very much into the melodies and the songs is has a very big role in the center and it's good for me i can't really play any instruments or sing so let the song be there in the middle play mellotron or something yeah i think uh, so yeah. <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> sure you're not just pressing play <laughs> it's standing there just like Alici. looking I like i can't even look cool <laughs> so i don't know, really know what i'm doing there <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, it's a uh, nice talking to you. We could talk for hours now, yeah. I guess, because uh, we just tangled up in some topics here. Yeah. Um, uh, final question. It's a quote of you, actually. Um, Angels Necropolis, if you would re-record it today, would it sound different than the original, which came out 2013? Probably. It would probably sound very different, because uh, uh, a lot of the stuff is... We, we rehearse the new songs and we write them and things are happening in the process all along and when we, we finally record it, uh, new things happen. Like every time we sort of touch it uh, for a recording or anything like that. So I think our way of working in the studio would make it not that different, but probably different. When we play it live, we kind of stick to what's on the record quite a lot. So maybe some small additions, but I think if we were to go into the studio and really want to create something and not just play the songs mm. straight off, it would probably sound different. Mm. I mean, you haven't been in the band then, but what do you think? Yeah, I think it. M I'm thinking it might be like more layers of stuff. On would on be a challenging thing yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. 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 But we're looking forward for for another album, for a third album. So yeah, yeah me yeah. too. Yes, yeah. we're working on it right now. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. 
out in the future. In the future, something. Yeah. Watch out for it in the future. I, th I say thank you, guys. Year of the goat, and um, yeah, probably buy some vinyl someday. <laughs>